So, welcome, hello, welcome to my talk about many, eight, maintaining 8,000 packages. That was the original title. Since then, um, some additions were made, so it's now actually 9,000. Um, it's about how we did, um, how we built the Postgres packages for um, the Postgres, yeah, software universe, and how we are doing quality assurance in there. So the problem looks simple at first. We have um, Debian, we have Postgres, we just make a packet of it and are, th so, and are done. But of course, the reality is more complex. Um, we have several Debian releases to target. There's uh, always at least five um, supported by upstream PostgreSQL major versions around. The most recent one is 9.4. Uh, 9.0 is actually going out of support at the moment. Um, I think it will get one more update from up, upstream and then it's gone. Um, the major pro um, packaging problem there is that um, the databases, the different major releases have an incompatible disk format, which means that on upgrading the package from 9.1, which was in Wheezy to 9.4, which is in Jesse, um, you actually need to have an upgrade procedure for your data as well. So you either need both versions installed in parallel or you need lots of disk space to dump the whole database cluster and also a complicated plan what should happen on the upgrade. So the preferred version is, of course, to make the packages for the different PostgreSQL versions co-installable. That's, uh, that's why the source package is not called PostgreSQL, but PostgreSQL-9.4. And um, we have an infrastructure on top of the PostgreSQL packages called PostgreSQL Common, which takes co care of also making sure that data can co coexist for several versions in the system. PostgreSQL Common is a um, Debian edition. It's not part of the um, upstream PostgreSQL software world. Um, it was originally written by... Uh, 10 years ago, I forgot actually the name, um, then mostly maintained by Martin Pitt, and now we are working together on it. Um, it has some Debian-specific quirks, but it can also be used on other operating systems. I've recently done a port to uh, Red Hat, which basically makes the whole coordination thing works um, on Red Hat as well, but that's not the topic here in the talk. So, um, Still, we only have one Postgres version in Debian at any time. As said, in Jesse it's 9.4, Wheezy has 9.1, Squeeze had something else. Um, the problem with that is that um, users will always want to try a newer Postgres tool version to, be, yeah, to do better testing, to do um, testing of their applications, and yeah, developers always want the latest thing. And of course, um, sometimes people want to upgrade the operating system without having to upgrade the database at the same time, or just to upgrade the up, uh, database first and up, upgrade the operating system later. So um, we want to have a plan that enables um, this to make it independent. So the so solution for that is that um, about three years ago, we created the apt PostgreSQL org repository which is a standard uh, repository driven by RepRepo hosting packages for all supported PostgreSQL major re releases built for all supported Debian and Ubuntu releases. So um, it's somewhat a superset of what backports would do, but um, backports didn't work for us because um, backports still only has the packages for stable, which are in testing currently, but of course, there's no 9.3 in testing, there's no 9.5 in, in testing, so um, we had to set up a separate um, repository there. Apart from that, the packages are just the same. They just get rebuilt in a standard cow builder environment using the very same source. Um, so at the moment, there's six supported Postgres releases in the repository from 8.4 until uh, 9.4. 8.4 is officially out of support uh, in the Postgres world, um, as um, the talk by Michael Bunk, uh, I think two days or so ago or something, 
that um, we are still supporting uh, 8.4 via the Squeeze LTS project, and I haven't disabled it yet on the um, APT PostgreSQL org repository as well, so um, your extensions would be available for that as well. Um, I've put 9.5, which is the uh, current alpha branch, uh, into parentheses there because it's not um, fully supported yet, but we also have packages for it there if you want to try, try the alpha release at the moment, and there's also um, already packages for 9.6, which is the current development branch. So um, that's po six PostgreSQL releases. We have seven um, Debian and Ubuntu releases covered from Squeeze, Wheezy, Jesse, Unstable, and three um, Ubuntu releases, the two uh, LTS ones, Precise and Trusty. The topic is an, yeah, nowadays outdated uh, non-LTS release. I should be upgrading that at some point, but so far there's been more uh, interesting stuff to do and users haven't been complaining. <laughs> So um, the whole thing is done for two architectures. Uh, yeah, the obvious candidate, AMD64, i386. So um, com these access combined makes um, 84 targets for which every package needs to get built. At the moment, we have about 130 source packages. Um, some of them are simple because they only need to get built um, once per Debian distribution and per architecture, so that makes 14 targets, but some of the packages uh, need to get built for each PostgreSQL version <coughs> because they are building server modules um, which really only work with 9.1 if they are compiled for that. And um, yeah, you really need a, the, the version of the extension module that fits um, this PostgreSQL server version there. So yeah, that's really where the combination for explosion happens. Um, there's some statistics. The archive size has been growing um, a lot since we started that at the end of 2012. Um, at the moment, we are s a bit below um, 7 gigabytes of packages. That's the red, li red line and the black line there is the number of packages, which is around 1,000 now. When I was submitting the talk, the, the number were around here, so it's... Um, what happened here that is that um, packages for PG Loader got added, which uh, is written in common list, so we had to add uh, about 55 common list source packages there, which also are in unstable, and um, that makes yet another bunch of packages which add, add up to the numbers here. So, um, about packages and tests, um, I don't need to tell you much about how to really build Debian packages. What we are doing special here is that we need to um, build the same source for several distributions, which means we need to have separate version numbers. Um, this is where the, um, this shell script generate PGDG means um, PostgreSQL Global Development Group, which was the acronym we are using to tag the packages. Um, it will just add it to the version numbers. It looks like um, BPO something, it's just a different string. Um, we get several source packages there and then build it for several architectures. This is the simple case. In the case of packages that need to get built for um, different PostgreSQL versions, there's the Postgres version included in the um, package name as well. And uh, in that case, um, even more depths are produced which um, have all the information encoded in the depth name so we can actually tell where, where the things are going and which we also need to uh, really have things included in parallel in the archive. So um, the problem with that is of course that no one is going to test 9,000 packages so we need um, more test suites. Um, the ninth thing is that Postgres itself has an extensive um, regression test suite. Most Postgres extension modules do have extension regression tests and also um, the aforementioned PostgreSQL common cluster management framework, server version management framework has also a test suite on top of the PostgreSQL packages. 
yeah, there's still yet another problem. No one is going to test that, so we need automation. And this is where um, Jenkins enters the picture. Um, yeah, um, those who have attended Mika's um, yeah, Jenkins Debian Club Bob will know. Jevin is, uh, con Jenkins is a continuous integration server, which is basically um, something that takes your co code and compiles it all the time. More generally speaking, it's a framework for running scripts triggered by uh, either manually or um, triggered by cron-like actions or triggered by VCS commits. Um, we're using so-called matrix jobs there, um, where one job is uh, responsible for building the source and the binaries for a given package, and these configurations that are attached to each job then will make sure it gets built per distribution and per architecture. So every job is uh, essentially ba uh, running 14 times once per distribution and architecture combination. Yeah, and the first, first uh, there's actually several jobs per source package, and the first step, uh, a source job, this was the first arrow uh, we saw uh, on that um, slide here, is takes the um, yeah, Debian source, this is a standard uh, source we are also using in Debian. Um, we strive to build from unmodified packages that are actually in, in unstable, except for this version number tweak. Um, takes the source, builds bina uh, source packages from them, and then in the next step, um, these binary packages get built. Yeah, and of course, thanks to Mika for um, providing the framework there. Um, I should finally take the time to mod merge back my changes into his system, but we are in close cooperation, so um, the features we have should be the same, just slightly implemented differently. Yeah, how it looks like, um, there's a huge list of um, packages to, to look at. Um, unfortunately, the, um, the build server is not public yet. I'm thinking about of, um, opening it for at least read-only access to everyone, but I haven't uh, thought up my mind uh, yet about how to se actually secure it. Um, if someone uh, wants to have a look there, just uh, notify me, I can, <coughs> give you an, can give you an account. <coughs> then uh, looking closer, I've just picked one um, Postgres extension module, which is Aura FCE, which stands for Oracle Functions and Compatibility Extension, which is useful if you're porting some Oracle application to Postgres, so can you, you can add some functions to the Postgres server that makes the database look more Oracle-like. Um, this gets built for um, the distributions mentioned there. Um, you can see that at some point the uh, build was actually failing, no idea what the problem was back then, um, but then yeah, one minute later it, it succeeded. Um, uh, apparently I fixed something there. So um, this then triggers the um, binaries jobs, which at that point was even more than 14, I think I, yeah, when I took the screenshot, um, Ubuntu Lucid was still alive. Uh, what it was nice to see that go because we had to uh, apply lots of hacks to support uh, modern packages on this very ancient suite. Um, Squeeze is uh, surprisingly modern compared to it. So <laughs> there's actually no uh, technical cost at the moment to drag it along. It's, I think it, I would leave it there until things start to break and it gets too annoying. Um, yeah, then the, um, the build artic artifacts, are, um, artifacts are produced um, and in the next step uploaded to the repository. There's a Debian testing um, like step in, involved there as well. So uh, uploaded packages do not get pushed to the distribution the users are seeing in the first place, but there's one manual step behind then when we're promoting the packages from the testing um, repository to the live repository. Um, yeah, we can look at the um, console output of the build. Here you can see this is the typical output of um, Postgres regression tests. It always says, okay, that's, that's fine. <coughs> and yeah, how does it actually work? Um, there's an extension or 
yeah, program um, inside the PostgreSQL common framework, which is called PG Build X, which makes the, the problem of building Postgres packages for multiple versions at once easier. Um, the problem is that the um, list of binary packages we are building um, for um, from one source package um, depends on which Postgres server versions are considered to be supported at that moment. In Debian, it's all most often only one, uh, once, but we want to have um, packages for several Postgres versions in parallel, which means that there needs to be a loop somewhere in Debian rules which calls um, make more often, and, of and there needs to be a mechanism which updates Debian control to um, actually mention the binary names we are um, doing there. So what PG Buildex is doing is basically loop over the list of PostgreSQL versions that are set to be supported by this very package. Um, in the ideal case, um, you would just say all in, the, in there, or you can say 9.2 plus if, it's, if it requires a minimum of Postgres 9.2. Um, it then loops over the um, list of yeah, versions there, takes the intersection with the versions that are supported by the system at the moment, and yeah, writes out um, the result to Debian control and makes sure the, um, the package is actually built. Um, there's examples in the man page um, which looks about this. Um, if you have a standard um, deb helper um, rules file, you need to do some overrides to actually hook PG build X in there. Um, of course, you could just manually say make for Postgres 9.1, make for Postgres 9.4, um, but this PG build X build extension um, or command will take core care of building in this subdomain mentioned here, this magic percent V gets replaced by the version number. Um, there's usually nothing to test there. I will come to back that later for uh, Postgres extension modules. Um, for installing, it's just the same. You tell it which package name you are installing for. Um, DH install doc usually needs a tweak that you want the documentation in all modules packages there, so the content is actually the same for all um, modules built, and the readme doesn't only end up in the first module built, but um, yeah, right. Um, the rest is just standard um, depper glue. Um, yeah, of course, if your package is more complicated, um, there will be more code code in there. Sometimes packages are using uh, are building server extensions and a binary. Then it gets more complicated, um, but it's basically just um, a simple shell extension here. So um, build time testing is nice. Um, testing installed packages is yeah sometimes better. Um, yeah, we need these to make sure um, files get actually put into the right place. Once the, the module is actually installed, you can actually load it into the server and do something with it. Um, that's where auto pa package test enters. Um, we have lots of um, yeah auto package tests in there, which make sure that once installed, the, um, the, the module is actually usable and just and didn't just compile and um, then we notice later it, it, it's not usable nonetheless. Um, this, is, this is also where the integration tests from the PostgreSQL common package get run. Um, a full test run for PostgreSQL 9.4 will something like, uh, will include something like 1300 um, tests and it's even more if you have um, more than one server version in installed in parallel because then it will automatically test um, for upgrades. Um, yeah, here's an example where it looks like. You've probably most of that uh, always seen that. Uh, in that case, um, it just goes to user share postgres so common in dust dot slash test suite. You can actually do that on, on your live system. Just go to that directory and run, th run that command as root, but um, make sure your database is not being currently used because it will 
uh, it will not delete it, but uh, it will st uh, start all sorts of temporary servers and um, shut them down again. <coughs> um, yeah, the problem with um, Postgres extension modules is that they usually don't support build time testing. Um, they only have a make install check target, which comes from this Postgres extension um, building um, infrastructure. No idea what the S stands for, actually. Um, which where um, PG Build X also helps you automate that. Uh, in the simple case, you just say PG Build X install check, and it will loop over all versions that are um, being targeted and um, fire off the tests. Um, you could also do more complicated things there, like filtering the list of versions you want there. I Let's say the test suite is broken on 9.0 anyway, but I know the package still works, so I'm uh, ignoring the test result there, and then call PG Build X install check, or if you want to, you can just call make check or whatever. Um, maybe what I didn't in mention so far was um, the code mentioned here is all part of the standard Debian packages. It's not specific to the uh, apt repository. Um, for Debian, it, it just gets run once, or the loop is a trivial loop that doesn't loop. And for um, um, when packages get built for app postgres.org, they will target more versions. If we were building that port, uh, backports for backports Debian org, it would automatically adjust the package to target the proper um, Postgres version there. So it's all of automatic, it's just a matter of running the build again. In theory, even um, bin NMUs would work to change the Postgres version supported by the package, but it's, uh, the problem there is that the set of packages built by one source changes and uh, bin MU don't like that. So a sourceful no change upload is required anyway. Yeah, all the auto package tests um, are also visible on CI Debian net. The screenshot here is a bit, little bit older. You probably all also have seen it. There's some CI column, not sure if you can read it there. Um, yeah, and yeah, we are slowly working on putting auto package tests in all Postgres packages. I I think I've done something about check Postgres lately, but I'm not really sure. Um, yeah, one omission to mention there is that Postgres uh, common doesn't have a test suite, which is kind of funny because um, it actually contains the test suite, but that's because the tests get really run for the server itself. Okay, here's a uh, few examples of bugs we've actually found um, using the machinery. Um, yeah, my favorite one is this one. This was um, in yeah March 2014. It was well past the freeze for um, Postgres 9.4. Um, it had been branched off there, and um, peer authentication was totally broken, which mean, meant um, it, uh, it wasn't discovered in um, while development because it still worked. If you were user Postgres into system, you could still log into the database as user Postgres. But what the bug there was that instead of checking your username when you're connected to the database, it would check the database username. So um, anyone claiming to be Postgres could log into a database running as system user Postgres. So the logic was just the wrong way around there and nobody tested it. Has, it had been, this is a super ugly first class security bug, wide open, and nobody noticed for months until the Postgres common extension, uh, sorry, test suite module discovered it. And um, <coughs> um, yeah, this was, um, this is actually a, um, a segmentation fault. So um, post <coughs> Postgres, um, you can write functions inside the database and you're allowed to write recursive functions. And 
if you, are, you have recursive functions, you need to make sure you don't ma uh, make the stack overflow. So there's actually a regression test which makes the stack overflow and then expects the error message um, stack depth limit exceeded. Um, uh, on a side note here, this is all context diffs. The Postgres community likes those. I got used to reading them, but they are still strange. Um, so uh, the, oh, sorry, this shouldn't happen. I need power, sorry. Is there something I can unplug? Oh, sorry. Okay, sorry, I, I'll tell it to restart, but I about roughly know what it says. Oh, there is this. Nice, okay. Um, okay, what happened here is that Postgres is exceeding the stack limit, and it, it is expecting for proper error message trapped by the server Excel itself. What in really, uh, reality happened was connection to server lost, which is the client side of a um, of a segmentation fault. And on looking into this, it was a problem with the hardening flags, which uh, had been applied to Postgres like forever and are now default uh, in the Debian compiler flag. The problem there is that the address space layout randomization uh, on 32-bit architectures on Linux leaves way too, um, too little space for the stack. So it's really easy to make the heap run into the stack, uh, even if you are still well below your configured stack limit. I think this is a kernel security bug, but I also think that um, I don't have time to to go through the Linux kernel mailing list to fight it through. So um, I was talking to Bastian Blank about it and he's also said, yeah, this looks fishy. I don't know why the address space randomization insists on putting heap and stack so close together. Uh, what I ended in, in the end is that we, just, uh, we are just disabling dash pi on all 32-bit architectures to make them secure again. Uh, it works on 64 bits because the, the address space is much larger there. Um, yeah, we found some regressions in um, the yeah, back then development version of Postgres when suddenly some um, query plans didn't repro uh, produce um, output anymore that was reproducible. Um, you can ask for a query plan of any query in, in, the, in the server just by prefixing it, prefixing it by explain, and then you get told, yeah, I'm going to use a nested loop here and a foreign scan and whatever. Uh, and then uh, during development, the developers there decided that they uh, wanted to add more information there. Um, this is actually the fixed output again. Uh, it had it told here that the planning time was something 0.10 or whatever milliseconds for this query, and of course this is not re reproducible. So the um, test for this module would fail all the time, and it was luckily fixed by uh, not showing the planning time for um, for the um, plan. Um, again. Um, there's been lots of time zone mess. Um, the, the bug was first reported um, to the Postgres list on a Solaris system, but I had exactly the same problem as well. Um, Postgres ships its own data, um, time zone database, but for Debian we are not using it, we are using the system time zone database and then suddenly the regression tests didn't go through anymore and uh, up in closer ex um, inspection it was actually the Russians to blame because some time zone definition was 
uh, changed for October 2014, which was used in the regression tests. Um, it was fi then fixed upstream by using um, a similar test case uh, for a different time zone, which is older. The problem there was actually that um, I was running um, an old version of TSET data on that system, and that test really depended on me having really current um, time zone data installed. Um, was easy to work around, but they also fixed it upstream. I think it, uh, it happened later again, but then we decided we just uh, go for the new version as well. Um, there's a few problems um, that are architecture specific. This one is still not really resolved. Um, one building PostgreSQL on MIPS and MIPS EL. Um, sometimes the one of the regression test modules simply hangs and then the build gets killed after five hours. Um, I think it depends on some sub-architecture there. Um, but I haven't got yet, uh, yet got ac access to a build daemon which act actually uses this code. Um, just rebuilding on a different MIPSOS fixes it. Um, I've seen a similar f uh, issue being fixed um, last month, but I haven't had uh, yet a chance to actually check if it's uh, if it fixed this um, issue there. Um, yeah, PSQL. ODBC, which is the ODBC driver for postcards, has always lots of interesting problems on interesting architectures. So um, these really get fixed quickly upstream, but um, someone needs to fix them, uh, needs to find them. Um, they have an internal type system which is interesting and sometimes just wrong on uh, non-standard architectures. Uh, yeah, and then of course there's lots of uh, cases where um, the extensions are not really ported to new PostgreSQL versions yet. Um, the a bit of a problem there is that the upstream authors of the extensions only start um, supporting new PostgreSQL versions once the new version is out. They don't really test it while it's still alpha, so yeah, Debian is doing that. Um, there's a few examples of bugs we have not found. Um, there were surprisingly many problems with um, SSL. Uh, in this case, um, the libqq version um, was upgraded from, I think, 9.2 to 9.4, and suddenly SSL didn't work anymore. And um, the problem there was that the DLS version was upgraded that uh, it supported, but the guy running that server only had a 512-bit RSA key installed, and this key is sometimes uh, too small to hold the packets necessary for TLS 1.2. Um, <coughs> I think that was not really fixable on the code side, so we just had to need uh, to tell users to use larger keys. Still, it was something that was missing in the, uh, in the release notes. Um, yeah, this was interesting as well, um, because all the, the um, error message was also always out of memory, um, while the actual problem was really something else. Um, this is a problem with um, post uh, postfix post, uh, Postgres backend. If you're running in a change route, um, Postgres 9.4 suddenly failed for no obvious reason. And on up and closer inspection, it was actually looking for ETC password to check your username, even if it's not used. And if you have a minimal change route, like what Postfix's construction, it suddenly was failing. No one thought about testing that before. I guess it's hard to test without being root on a system, but still this is something that some test suite should have found, but didn't. Yeah, okay, so what's left to do for us? Um, some packages still don't have tests. I'm increasingly 
uh, uncomfortable with actually uploading these, so I should be doing something about it. But with some packages, it's just not possible. Like for example, with PG Admin, the graphical front end, I wouldn't know how to test it anyway. Um, there are a nasty problem is that some packages have interesting test suites, which probably run on the developer's machine, but not on my machine because my home directory is called differently and they have interesting ideas about where the binaries should be. Um, this is mostly the problem with um, PG pool and the more complicated front ends. Um, yeah, in the end I'm just not running that test that I should, yeah. Um, yeah, what we're seriously la lacking is some way to really trigger rebuilds of packages that are updated somewhere or when a new architecture or a new distribution gets added. We should have some wannabuild-like system. Uh, we need to look into that. Maybe I should be discussing that with Mika as well. Um, yeah, we don't have a nice packages Debian org like front end yet. Um, it's been written, but it's not. It's made uh, made its way into the Django installation on the Postgres web server yet. Um, yeah, we could be looking into making building Postgres extension modules even easier with some eh sequencer command or even something like eh make pg access, which would just automate everything uh, related to the um, initial package creation. And yeah, of course, speaking to the choir here, um, there should be more people working on the Postgres ecosystem. There's about 50 source packages in the group of which, yeah, let's say 35 have my maintainer name on it, but that's too much. Um, yeah, maybe if someone pops up. I won't give up the hope for it. Okay, thank you for your attention. <laughs> Anything you would want from the repository? User feedback? Which architecture are we missing? Um, I do have a question myself. You uh, showed one of the examples of uh, failing test cases on architectures. Yeah. But I think you explained that you only had ARM 6086 uh, uh, and the Intel. So I guess these failures were from the uh, Debian. That was from, 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 the Debian, from the Debian build. Yeah, I was mixing that there a bit. Um, still, it's the same um, test suite being run. Okay, so thanks again. And thank you.